This sign, La Frontera, definitely tells you from here on out, this is not Kansas anymore. But there's a lovely hacienda over here. And they do, in fact, have an observatory. So here we go. An observatory here, established in the town of Alcuez on the property of what may very well be a hostel or a hotel with lovely, probably grape tree bushes, bushes of some kind in the foreground. Let's get a sense of what this says over here. Chilean flag. This is the El Cielo restaurant. How fitting. I'm entering the grounds, the restaurante, and La Ciel, Ciela, Cielo restaurant. And we just informed by Edison that in fact you can book to stay here in one of the cabanas or perhaps one of the rooms. And clearly, they have an observatory. And they make it available for the clientelage. But as the sign said back there, you've entered the frontier. Here we have a look inside the restaurant associated with the observatory and the cabanas. And a bar. Dinner tables, a cochina. Can we prepare the food? I've asked if I can see the inside of the observatory, and La Senora went to see if there's someone who can open it up. Here with Mako, and he's responsible for the observatories here. There are actually how many observatories do you have? There's a two. Two. This one here is used for solar. solar observing, but you don't have your solar telescope there now. No. Presumably you use like hydrogen two filters, hydrogen three filters, so you can see the actual activity of the sun in detail, right? Yes. And do people often use it, Marco? No, the solar telescope is not useful because people, national people here, and they're not very interested. They're not interested, I see. But we're going to take a walk down to the other observatory? Yes. And have a look at the equipment? Yes. That's excellent. And then you'll give me some particulars about how folks can reach you over the internet? Okay. To possibly come down and spend some time observing the night sky? Uh-huh. Excellent. So we're going to walk down. You have cabanas here to stay in? Yes, bungles from two people up to eight people. Two to eight people run a cabana. And then the, and anybody who rents here has access to the observatories? No, the access is, uh, is different. It's a special, a special cost. Yes. And you have to book it in advance? You have to book it. Yes. You have to book it in advance. And of course, you know that there's only really two good weeks out of the month where some excellent observing can be done because of the, the moon, la luna. Oh, yeah. So most people come here when the sky is dark. And right now we have a crescent moon, which yes. means you'd probably have some very good observing at this time, especially later in the evening. Yes. They actually have two observatory domes down here. So there are three observatories. One is for the sun, and then two are for night sky astronomy. And Mako is going to explain a little about what we're going to see here. Well, inside there are two CPC inch telescopes. So they are for the night view. You can see most stars most uh, deep sky objects as well, mm -hmm. like clusters, open ones, and deep and closed ones. And also you can see nebulas and some principal objects like planets. And these are 11 inch SCTs? CPC. You call them CPC? Yes. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, SCT is a schmidt cassegrain So these are short scopes with big apertures, right? Yeah, For it's a schmidt cassegrain schmidt cassegrain well. called, yes. Oh, so yeah, SCT is what we call them. We also have a thing called a Maxitoff. MCT, but you don't have Maxitoff Cassegrains here. No. They're a little more expensive than Schmidt Cassegrains. Do you have go-to Yeah, it's go yes. So when you do a tour of the sky, you basically just type in NGC 6250, yes. and then it goes to it. 
And you, every night, do you have to do another uh, seven or ten star alignment, or is it always aligned for you pretty well? For three, three star alignment. You do a three star alignment just as a final check. Mm -hmm. Because the scopes are mounted, you never move them. No. They should be very close to being aligned. Can we go inside, take a look? Yes. Thank you, Marco. So the observatory is about eight foot in diameter. You can see the scope is inside of a dust cover and it's got a solid mount. Do you have equatorial mounts? Equatorials? Uh, what kind? Not equatorials, okay. This is an SCT and Mako's gonna uncover it. It's got an 11 inch aperture that's on a yoke type mount, a yoke mount. And so the telescope doesn't have to be directed or pointed in any direction to follow the stars because that's all taken care of automatically by the servo drivers associated with the mount. So all Mac, because the, this telescope is permanently mounted here, he just does a quick three-star alignment in the evening and then he's rapidly able to start looking at objects in the night sky and he can direct the scope to whatever object he wants to go to using this handset right here. Uh -huh. So, Mako, what do you particularly like about being the chief astronomer here in the Elki Valley? Well, I particularly like to see some deep sky objects like the close cluster 47-2 Canine. Mm. Or like to see in summer here we can see the um, Orion Nebula. Sure. So it's very beautiful. Oh, it is. Well. Even from Del Norte, it's absolutely beautiful because it's very close to the uh, equatorial axis of the Earth, so both the North and South Hemispheres get great views. Uh-huh. And uh, from the southern sky, the Tarantula Nebula, mm -hmm. and also we can see the open cluster of the Southern Cross constellation. Mm. It's the um, Jewelbert cluster. Mm. Can you resolve any of the stars in the Magellanic clouds? They should be about 13th, 14th magnitude, the brightest stars? In the Magellanic, I don't remember that. You don't remember if you can if you can actually see stars in it. Uh, yeah, you can see some stars, but I don't remember the magnitude. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Well, this is wonderful of you, Mako, to give me this tour. So the other observatory is identical to this one. Yes. So you have two, uh -huh. and as you say, astronomers book in advance to come here, and do they get to operate the equipment at all? when they book, or do you do all the operation of the equipment? I do all the operation, operation. So you, if, guide. as a tourist guide. But what if an if a amateur astronomer okay. like myself were to come? Would they be able to just come in the observatory and use the equipment alone? Well, I can like observe if you know how to use the equipment, and if I know that you can use it, I can leave you alone. Yeah, you can get a good night's sleep. Yeah. The other question would be, do you train people who don't use this particular equipment? Do you show them how initially for like 15 or 20 minutes? Well, not usually, but if they are like not from Chile, I can do that. One of the things that I've been talking about quite a bit, Mako, is the views. That view is pretty much due north. No, that's south, actually. So it does look like you have an excellent sky here. Here, lots well, of coverage. The south is that direction. Mm -hmm. Then we have the east, okay. the north, and the west. I see. Well, very good. Thank you very much. And once again, we're going to return up through this lovely valley. It's just beautiful here. Yeah, it is. Do you do other things besides the astronomy here? Well, fishing. Fishing. In the river. Fishing. Oh, there is a river down below. That looks beautiful. Nice, nice corridor, riparian corridor down below. Wonderful. Well, I can't think of a nicer place to come and spend some time observing the night sky by night and after waking up at the late hours, uh, coming outside and hiking around. Do you have bicycles or horses? Horses. You have horses people can rent. Wonderful. And then this road, of course, just continues going up into the Andes, doesn't it? Walk along, Mako was just telling me that his initiation into the night sky here occurred in 2005. They didn't have the observatories then. Some amateur astronomers from Del Norte came down, set up their own telescopes and began observing. At the time, Mako was mostly leading horse 
Caballero rides up further up in, uh, this dirt road that we've been traveling. He got interested in the night sky and then he started to learn his way around. And Marco, when did you actually install the first observatory? 2010. 2010. Yep. So just a couple of years before the world came to an end. The Mayan calendar. Yeah. And so they set it up in 2010. By this time, your interest was very strong oh, yeah. for astronomy. Yes. And at that point, you took over. Were you involved in the construction of these observatories? In choosing the telescopes. In choosing the telescopes. Uh, I was thinking a 10 inch would be a good choice for here. Yeah. A minimum good choice. Yeah. And the 11 inch, of course, is a bonus. As I said, I observed with a friend with a 22 inch, and we travel around. So that's, that's a wonderful instrument. Just not the kind of thing you'd easily ship to Chile oh, yeah. to observe for a week or two. Very good, thank you so much.